Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the show where we bring you up close and personal with some of Canada's most exciting and vibrant communities. I'm Christopher Brown, your host for this exciting journey. This episode of the Cross Border Interviews was recorded live at the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association Conference in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan in April. Our show is dedicated to sitting down with local elected leaders from communities all across Canada, and our goal is to learn about who they are, what drives them, and how they are working to make their communities a better place for everyone who lives there. Today's guest is Saskatoon City Councillor Bev Dubois. Okay. Um, Bev, I want to... Do you mind if I call you Bev? That's absolutely okay. fine, yeah. Um, Bev, I want to thank you so much, but I want to start with the question that I start off all my interviews with, so you're no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve come from? Well, that's an interesting question, because um, now as an adult... I know it started in elementary school and you know many years ago I had to give a speech and, and they said tell us where you got to where you are now and how you did that. So I sat down on my laptop and was thinking like, oh my goodness elementary school I was running the act activities as a student in my elementary school and I won an award at grade eight you know activity or I, I can't remember what it's called and then in in high school I was on the student I went to Walter Murray and we called it the Student Representative Government, not Student Representative Council. That's what our school did. And so I ran, uh, you know, when I was on that um, all my four years of, uh, of high school. And during that time, I led many projects like raising money for the digital scoreboard and, uh, and, and many, many other things in, in high school. But I did it because I loved it. It's just, it's like in my DNA. I didn't say, oh, I should do this because it's good for the community or, you know, oh, this is good because it makes me look like a good person. Like none of that. So I didn't know. And then I got into university and I had three part-time jobs while going to university, but I still managed to do some things um, at the university, some volunteer things. And, um, and then once I started working, I actually, I, um, was, I was seeking out boards that I could be on and again I have no idea where that came from I, I do not know um, my father worked for CN he was gone all the time my mom was basically a stay-at-home mom you know a very strong woman raising three daughters pretty much on her own because my father was away most of the time but yeah. um, so it's it's an interesting question for me because I've just done it and I haven't really thought um, that you know um, so how does a girl who gives back to her community decide one day I'm gonna run for council <laughs> well so again you know once I became an adult and started working and started uh, you know paying attention to to things like city council and, and even school boards and and the news I used to pay attention to the news I, I thought a long time before I ran I thought well you know I, I want to do that someday because I think I can make a difference and they really you know in hindsight now that's really why I do things is because I, I, I can make a difference and so um, actually I was asked to run at, a, at quite a young age for provincial politics but I had a one-year-old and a three-year-old at the time Wow! and I was working I was um, I was working for Direct West and their head office is, is in Regina so I was you know based out of Saskatoon but I, I was still in Regina a lot and that was even difficult with two with two young ones right and I thought, no I can't I can't run for you know provincial politics at this time it's just not going to work but I thought to myself well, I'm gonna someday I am gonna run so it was, it was put in the back of your head always that... always okay. yeah yeah and I uh, just by yeah just by the things that I that I did again not knowing that that's what I was leading my life up to, or you know, a good part of my life up to. Before we turn to the SUMA convention as a whole, one of the big things that I've been trying to get to the bottom of is why is municipal government, municipal politics, the least talked about level of government? It is the most impactful level of government, but the apathy that municipal government has around it for some reason is appalling. Voter turnout is going down. People are not engaged. Less and less people are running for these offices. Why do you think that is? And do you think it's happening in Saskatoon? And if I'm completely out to left field, please tell me, because I would love to be proven wrong that people are actually engaged municipally. Yeah, you make a good point. I, I would love to see folks 
engage much more municipally. I mean, as you said, we are the, the government closest to the people. We have really the most impact on people's everyday lives, you know, whether it be their, their streets, their garbage, their recycling, their green carts, police, fire, what, clean drinking Literally water. everything. Literally <laughs> everything that, you know, um, goes towards having a good quality of life. And yet we are the one that seems to be missed most often. Um, like when you go out and engage with your communities, are people willing to give their feedback on issues or like community open houses? Do people come out? Do people engage? And I'm not trying to throw Saskatoon under the bus because I've asked this question to a lot of you, your fellow delegates here at SUMA. Are people engaged in your community, do you believe? Well, they are. Like, I, so we're in a ward system in yeah. Saskatoon and, and I'm in Ward 9. And my ward is really engaged, but I will say that I allow them to be engaged because I do, I do something called coffee with the counselor twice a month in my ward. And I, I arrive and I've got people in line already waiting. I, I do it for two hours. And uh, from when I first started doing it many years ago, I, I uh, would say to myself, okay, I'm gonna, and I always have a volu- I have a wonderful volunteer that, that comes with me because you know, they're set up, we've got signs and everything. And it's like, we're gonna go and we're gonna get a coffee and, or you know, what, something to drink. No, you bring all of, I bring all of that with me because you have no time to go and get a drink mm-hmm. or anything. So I bring water, coffee, whatever, and it's nonstop. And I love that, but the engagement is, is, is good. You know, is I'm, it a cross section of society as well, or is there more youth compared to more uh, older Canadians? In mine, I would say it's a good cross section. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm so impressed by Ward Nine right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually planning a town hall um, for early in June, and I've invited the mayor to join me for that one. And so that'll be, um, you know, a, a, a larger one, and it'll be in the evening. The coffee with the counselors I do are. Um, well, I strategically have the times, and they're during the day. Um, and I send out newsletters, you know, on, on through Mailchimp, and I do a couple of mail outs a year, and send a calendar out at Christmas time with, you know, a, fa- a family picture for Christmas. So I engage my residents a lot. Uh, for me, that is pretty much the most important part of the job. I want to turn to Suma now. You are the uh, the the chair of this amazing tune in session. Um, I want to start by saying this. How do you feel the SUMA Tune In 2023 went? You know, I am so excited and I'm so happy. The convention went absolutely excellent. We made quite a few changes this year. Um, this is like a, what? Well, for example, we did not have the trade show opened when everyone was in sessions. That was feedback we'd heard from the trade show folks, you know, and it makes sense, right? Why have all, they, they load in, they have all of their stuff, they want to talk to people. So we didn't have any of that. We started the trade show earlier on Sunday on our first day. We had a new um, event, I guess you could call it, um, from four to six on Sunday called Early Access Trade Show. So, and, and we allowed time within the schedule. There, there were no sessions. So folks could go and walk around. We had um, a refresh cash bar available and, and uh, snack, uh, food, hot food. And the feedback I've had from that has just been tremendous. Said, you know what, we can go, we can talk to them. You know, even though it's towards the end of the day, you're hungry, you're a little bit tired, but you know, we can have a snack, and, and it was really good. And I've talked to um, many, many of the, the trade show, um, the, 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 the businesses, sorry, and they're very happy. They're very happy. I will also tell you that we had a budget of how many trade show booths we wanted for this convention. We overpassed that. And therefore, we overpassed our budget because that means more money. So very happy with the trade show. And just overall, very, very happy with the with the convention. The feedback's been great. It was it was a great um, decision to move it to April from uh, beginning of February, when usually it's minus forty. You know, so folks don't have to have their winter coats, their boots. You know, and, and uh, they can walk if they want. They can walk around downtown, our beautiful city, see the river. You know, that type of thing. And um, so, no, the the it's been an overwhelming success. So what do you hope people are taking away from this week, this last few days? Because um, we are recording this the day, the last, second last day of the event, and people are going to be going home Wednesday morning. So what are you hoping people take away from this? And what are you hoping that people take away from the whole experience of being here in Saskatoon? Well, a number of things. First of all, um, folks have, have said to me they love Saskatoon. 
One of our events uh, was the welcome reception. It was the, at the Ramey Modern Art Gallery, and most of the folks here have not even been in there. And we are very proud of that building in Saskatoon. It's been a long time coming. There's been you know, some hiccups along the way, but it is a, magnif a ma magnificent building. It overlooks the river, and we had some uh, light entertainment. We had some good food, and folks are still saying, wow, that Ramey Modern, we really enjoyed it. So again, that was a, that was a new, sort of a newer thing. Um, we had our keynote speaker, it was Cody Demery, and uh, the committee of which I chair, we went through a number of potential keynotes, and we chose Cody. Um, he is, it, it, basically it's mental health, and he, he lives in Prince Albert, he's a Métis a, a gentleman, and he was basically addicted. He had addictions, and he almost lost his life a couple of times, and uh, he went through that, that story. And, uh, and now he just, uh, two years ago, won Young Entrepreneur Business of the Year through, a through the Savex Awards. And um, it was a very, he health, mental health and addictions is one of the pillars that SUMA has, has chosen to really work hard on with, uh, with the provincial government and with our municipalities, because it's a real issue in our province. And so he, Cody's uh, presentation just uh, tied in very well with what uh, the SUMA board has made as a priority for us to work on. What's next? What's next for yourself, for the city of Saskatoon, for SUMA? What's next? Well, for SUMA, I mean, we'll just keep growing um, the conference. The conference has been going on for many, many decades. But I think they know, said 119 years. Like this is like the yeah. 119th year, no, Randy we, was I saying. I have been at all of those, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, I have, totally. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm. But you know, you always want to improve and grow, right? Yeah. And so we are doing that. We are making changes. Sometimes change is hard though, you know, folks are used to the same, yeah. but we are making changes. And as I mentioned earlier, the changes that we made this year have all been uh, very well uh, taken and, and appreciated actually. For myself, um, well, I'm gonna, I, I hope to be in politics for a long time. You know, you have to get reelected. Are you enjoying it? Oh, I love being a city councillor. What's been the best experience for you? Helping people. Really? Yes. I've been on city council for 16 years, and the only the reason that I run is so that I could help people, that I could help make their lives better. I've, I've thought once in a while, maybe I should have been a social worker, <laughs> but, you know, I, cho I chose this, and I've been... Um, I've been grateful that I get that I get reelected. You know, you have to work hard at the elections and, and whatnot. But um, I can help people make the qual make their quality of life better, and give them a voice. So, for someone who's been in elected office for 16 years, you have seen good governance. You have seen bad governance. I'm assuming. In your opinion, what does good governance mean? Good governance is, in the case of a council, a city council, working together as a team. Now, that doesn't mean we all have to agree on every single thing. Quite frankly, if we agreed and voted exactly the same on everything, that would be a, a problem. As the right? media, we would love that to not well, have to... <laughs> yeah, right. But Joking. that would be a problem. But it's working together as a team, whether you agree on issues or not, whether you voted the same on a contentious vote, don't take it personally. You go out of that room and you, you work together as a team because if you don't work, in my opinion, as a team, you cannot get things done to the extent uh, you know, of, uh, as not being a team. And so that is my, my number one thing, is work together as a team, get, to, you know, get along together, and project that to your, to your city, to your municipality as well because you know, the public, they don't like unrest either. I was in the town session earlier on Tuesday, and one of the things that one of the delegates said, and I, I, I kind of chuckled at it because it's a question I ask a lot of people who have been in government elected office for some time, and they were, they were hoping to get advice from people who have attended conferences, who have been in office for some time. I'm assuming she's a first term uh, elected official. For you, what advice do you give the new councillor, the new mayor, if they asked you, what's the biggest thing I should take away from being an elected official in my first year? Because there's a lot, it is a big learning curve. And for you, what advice would you give to that first term councillor to say, this is how to make it a little bit easier? While it may not be the perfect solution, it helps a little bit. Well, if I may, I'm gonna to speak to the step 
just before that, yep. if, if that's okay. I would say anyone looking to run for office should do their homework first as to what it, what it entails. You know, there are some folks that, that think, um, like city council, oh, it's a part-time job, and you go to a, a city council meeting once a week. I've had people not uh, recently, in your but city? over the years say, well, I thought you only meet on Monday, you know, when we had our city council meetings on Monday. So, and I have mentored a lot of folks that have thought, have been thinking about going into municipal politics, but I sit down with them and I'm honest with them and I tell them what the schedule is if you're doing a good job, right? And it, it is hectic. Like you're going sometimes seven days a week and in the evenings, there's lots of evening things. Of course, you have to balance it out with your own personal life, your home life, but do your homework on what the job actually entails. Once you do get elected, I would say it, it um, don't be afraid to ask questions of the administration and of your colleagues, especially the colleagues that have been there for a while. Do not be afraid to ask questions. I would say don't try to go to everything at once. We get invited to so many events, so many ribbon cuttings, so many, so many things, and I love that part of the job too. I absolutely love that. But I would say as a new counselor, don't go to everything. I've seen new counselors burn out the first two or three months, you know, and I've said, no, like, don't do that. You know, you like to go to those. I like to go, but you, you have to balance. So balance your life, balance, you know, um, your time and, and do a good job. Now, the other thing I will say is listen. Listen to your constituents. They are the ones that elected you. They are your boss. You know, the mayor's not my boss. He's my colleague, but the constituents in my ward are my boss and listen to them because um, not because necessarily they vote for you. You don't. I don't do things just for a vote. But they're the ones that know what's going on in their area, what they what they need, what they don't need, or in the whole city, what they want, what they want, you know, spent on, you know, their taxes, how much they can afford. So so listen to them and and try to find ways to connect with them, um, like the different ways I do. You know, they are different ways because I can can connect with different groups. One of my neighborhoods is um, pretty much all seniors. It's the largest um, neighborhood of seniors in all of Canada, the highest. Um, wow. Yeah, I know. I said wow when I was told that too. And it's everything from level five care to um, seniors, young seniors that you know are here in the summer and go down south for six months. And it's everything in between, seniors' homes. And I go to all of those. I, I, some of them, you know, they don't even might not even understand I go to there I go there and I and I still you know listen to them or shake their hand and just spend time and and uh, so it's all listen listen to what you know what folks need and that's very important so I'm going to end on this and this is the million dollar question for you what makes the city of Saskatoon such a unique place to live to work and to raise a family well we do have a beautiful city and the river. You really do. Yeah, it you is. It and is. it's an old city too, which is some of the architect in your community is such an amazing experience when I was walking around. It is. And the river makes that a very beautiful part of the city. And one of the, the reasons our city is beautiful in that regard is we've managed our river valley very well. Um, we don't have, uh, we really don't have a lot of housing right, well, we don't have any housing right along the river. We've got the Miwasan Valley Authority, which is a steward. Of, of the River Valley in Saskatoon and, and beyond um, into the arm of Corn Park as well. And so we've got a lot of um, procedures and policies as to what you can and can't do on the riverbank. And I think that has, um, well I know, that has um, enabled it to be what it is, what it is now. And further from that is the people. The people in Saskatoon are wonderful. And I hear that, I heard that, I heard that at the convention all the time. You know, the convention is at TCU Place. When I was going to high school, I worked at TCU Place. It was called the Centennial Auditorium then. And I worked um, in the box office and next door to the box office answering people's questions. And I got to talk to a lot of promoters. They would come in and say hi, and then they would also ask me if, they, if I would sell their merch, you know, and they would just, they would pay me to do that. And they would tell, they would say, your city is so friendly. And your people are so good. I mean, you walk down the street and they smile at you. And that doesn't happen very many places. So it's it really, number one, it's the people. And number two, it's just that we have a beautiful city. And I think we're, we've laid the city out 
in a, in a good way. You know, we're working on infill, we're working on rejuvenating the downtown, and and but people are definitely number one. Last night, when we uh, on Monday night, uh, we we had a bit of time after the last session with the resolutions. Uh, my grandfather was born in Saskatoon. I, I I I went and I found the house that he was born in, and. It made me really connect more with the city because my grandfather yeah. would have been in some of these places that we've gone to or walked some of the streets mm -hmm. that I've taken little jobs yes. for. And I can tell you, when you talk about that friendly atmosphere, you do notice it. They didn't, like, they never, no one ever looked at me while I was driving around looking for this house. They were just waving at me. I was like, okay, I'm not yeah. sure why. But yeah. it's something about in the air. And yeah. you have an amazing city, so... Thank you so much for that doing that. That story about your grandpa's house is just wonderful. I got goosebumps. I'm going to the that. church because the, uh, we. I, uh, so it's weird. Uh, th this is all. I need to put this in as well. Um, so St. Thomas Presbyterian Church. St. Thomas Wesley. Yeah. It's now St. Thomas oh, Wesley sorry. United Church. Yes. So the Presbyterians sold it to the United Church and they rebranded it to the Wesley. And then from what I understand, the bell tower in 2008 was dilapidated and it uh, they took tore it down because there were some issues and i'm going to go find saint thomas wesleyan wow, today that's because amazing. that's where my grandfather's oh, parents were married and wonderful. we have the wedding notice yeah. and all so oh, wonderful i'm learning so much about saskatoon so <laughs> yeah. thank you so much Bev. my pleasure and it was great to be with you Thank you so much to our guests for joining us for this episode of the Cross Border Interviews. And to our viewers, thank you for tuning in and being part of this conversation. If you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our latest interviews and special episodes. We have some amazing guests lined up and we can't wait to share their stories with you. If you're able to, please consider backing the show to help us to continue to grow and produce more high-quality content. Every little bit helps. We appreciate your support as well. A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes. And if you can, please don't forget to subscribe to our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more behind-the-scenes content, show updates, and so much more. And finally... As much as we all love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real-life, in-person conversations with the people in our lives, even if it's just for five minutes. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Cross-Border Interviews. And remember, everyone, just keep talking.